So today I've got a Kodak Retinet 2A camera. Now this was a um, sort of an upmarket model compared to the Retinet 1As which you're probably much more familiar with. This one had a built-in exposure meter and basically it was a match needle arrangement. You turn the dial here to match the needle up in its appropriate slot and the um, that would set the shutter speed and the aperture to match the, the meter and then you would take your shot. There were no scales here for shutter speed and aperture settings. You simply match the needle, let the camera do the thinking for you. This particular camera has come to me for a service. You can see it's got one little problem here that the focus scale ring is loose and falling off. That's a, a simple matter to fix. The shutter certainly needs to be serviced. It's, it's unreliable in its um, action. And possibly more importantly here, the rear viewfinder eyepiece is missing. I'm not sure how that could fall out. It probably means it's fallen in. Hopefully it's rattling around loose inside the top of the camera. It's possible that someone's already had the top of the camera off and um, taken out the loose part with an intention to do something with it and not done anything useful with it and that the part is no longer there and available to be used. But all this is to be discovered. I don't work on one of these cameras very frequently because they're absolutely dependent on the selenium meter and the selenium cells of course are all failing with old age it's dubious as to how much useful use you could get from a camera like this I expect with a uh, say ISO 200 colour print film you could possibly get reasonable results minor exposure problems there are fairly well hidden by the latitude of the film. Anyway, I've got to get into this camera. So I'll start with the shutter I think and then work on the top later. Got a spanner for undoing the retaining ring here. Hopefully it will work for me. It appears that today is a good day. See if I can spin that ring off. I know the camera has been serviced before. There's a Kodak London 1968 sticker on it, so it was serviced at that point. Got two connections here for the flash, two here for the meter by the looks of it bit of uh, crappy plastic insulation tape in between the two. I'll have to get onto those with my soldering iron and desolder those and that will free up the shutter back shortly. Well with the shutter removed from the camera there's our piece of insulating tape. There are two wires there that connect up to the piece in here and the other one was our flash connection here. So what have we got here? Well there's a, a spacing ring or shim at the back there we can remove that so we don't lose it. From the front it's looking at the rear lens group there is a little collar there that lens may or may not come out if I was to get that collar loose, there's nothing to engage on that collar, a friction tool would have to be used or a notch would have to be filed either side. There's probably no point in me doing that, I can clean that lens while the, once the shutter is disassembled and that way I avoid the possibility of damage if it turns out that the lens is cemented into the mount and I push and probe at it too, too much and break something. Let's remove the front group or the front element. This will be a triplet. It's a Riemar lens which was a trade name of Codex. May well have been a design or formulation. Typically they were made by um, 
Schneider, but they were also made by Rodenstock at a later stage, so I presume it was Codex design. The front rings here, the action controls the depth of field pointers, so as the aperture increases or decreases the depth of field pointers swing in or out. This is all very stiff so it's hard to see what's happening there. In from the front, where are the screwdrivers? This somewhat unhappy looking screw holds that little locking tab in place. The screw head is the slot in the screw head is very shallow. The whole screw head is very shallow. Take that tab off. And the retaining ring here is um, not in awful condition. Just poking at this with the tip of my tweezers, see if I can get that to rotate. It's pretty stiff. When I worked at Kodak, we actually had a tool that would engage the slots, engage in the, the slots of that thing, but I do not have such a tool. So I'm just putting a drop of solvent here. in the hope that will get down in the threads and loosen up because it there'll be a lot of dried grease and rubbish holding that in place. It's pretty reluctant. The retaining ring's only aluminium. It's uh, quite soft and easily damaged. I'm not getting anything. Alright, I'm going to stop here. I'm going to go and heat this up with a hairdryer because a change of temperature affects different metals differently and very likely that will loosen up that thread and I can get that ring off. Oh, I've got this nice and warm. Let's see if that had the desired effect. No, oh, there was a hint of movement there. No, perhaps I imagined it. The ring's down in a recess here, so I can't get a traditional um, spanner onto this. It's really not moving. I do have other techniques available for use. But that's going up the scale of more and more brutal methods. I'd really rather avoid that if I possibly can. Let's see if I can span this with the, this pair of tweezers, see if that will yeah, it's going. Yeah, it's going to come off now. Gosh, that's tight. Very rough feeling on those threads. It's certainly possible that this was cross threaded when it was put on.
Here we're loose. Flip that front ring off complete. That can stay on the shutter. So this assembly, this controls the action of those depth of field pointers. And you can see here, with this freed from the rest of the shutter, that moves comparatively freely. You can tell by the gritty sound of that that it's got a lot of dust and rubbish in there and does need to be cleaned. But the action there is quite obvious. That's, that's working fairly well. That's a sub-assembly I will take apart by itself. The retaining ring doesn't look damaged. It's certainly very dirty. This ring here controls the action of the levers here, which control the shutter speed, and here, which control the aperture. And the aperture, the diaphragm here, is very sticky. You can see a lot of oil on the blades. So at least we're into the shutter. From the front, this is a uh, Prontor shutter, or a, what model they call it, a Prontor mat. It basically, it's a Prontor shutter. There's nothing uh, overly complex about the shutter itself. Um, all the clever action is basically the dials on the front, which don't give you any information, and which are changing the aperture and the shutter speed at the same time. Cock the shutter. That releases here. Well, B certainly worked well enough. I don't see any serious problems with servicing the shutter. I'm looking at my connections. The flash connection here. And this connection is a switch. And the switch's job is almost certainly to switch the meter in and out of action when you turn so that it's disconnected when you switch to the flash setting. Well, basically on the flash setting you're not relying on the meter at all. You are manually setting the aperture according to the distance. Okay. That looks alright. That little piece do? Let's change our aperture. Yeah, it does. So the, the diaphragm is sprung loaded to close down, and this cam here limits its amount of the amount of distance it can close down. So if it was too sticky, it would probably tend to stay stuck open, and all your photos would be overexposed. That does work reasonably well. Certainly, considering the state of everything, it's working very well. The control room here. It's got a cam on it. Now, the pin comes through from the back of the camera and couples to the meter. So, as the, this control ring is swung, it pushes the pin on the camera in here which controls the swing of the meter so that you can get your needle centered up in the mark. It looks like it all comes off to the rear. This piece has obviously got to come off first, the control lever. There's three screws holding that in place. Since I am not overly familiar with this shutter, I will put the parts out in some sort of order so that I can find things.
had it been one of the shutters I work on routinely, I wouldn't need to do that because I'd know exactly where everything goes and I could just strip everything down, throw everything in a heap and find the parts I want later. I also have the advantage here that I'm going to be doing this job in the in its entirety straight away. Let's take that retainer off the back. So, and take the ring here off too. So it means that I can be quite confident that laying the parts out on the table in front of me, they'll be there by the time I get to the end of the job. It's a bit different if you're spreading a job out over a number of weekends. You've got to put pieces away, otherwise you're going to get in trouble with the domestic supervisor. Somewhere I have a handy little tool for cocking shutters. Cock that shutter. Now the switch here appears to be held in place with a single screw. I'll remove that because I don't really want to damage that. And that assembly will probably lift out as a single piece with a bit of luck. No, not today. Screw, an insulating washer, fairly large hole, the red insulated wire, this probably doesn't want to come out of the hole in the body here because it's probably blobbed over with solder, yeah, the insulation didn't want to come out. The base piece here which is the earth for all practical purposes, the ground. Good, that gets that little complication out of the way. It means it's not there to be damaged. I'll remove the retard gear train. It's held in with two screws. Unlike the retard gear trains on the uh, more common Prontor shutters, the, the screw placement here is different. This one here holds the flash contact in place. It probably holds the retard gear train in place too, we'll find out shortly. Yes, that appears to be the case. And the flash contact is fitted on top of the retard gear train, not underneath it. I'll make note of that. And there's a bit of oil visible here in the shutter. Um, if there's oil there, which of course there shouldn't be oil there, if there's oil visible there, there'll be oil on the shutter blades as well. The shutter here is sitting in the cocked position. If I hold that arm back, I can push that across. But I will be able to once I remove this detent spring. You can move that across, puts the blades, the shutter and the blades open position. And I'm just seeing if there's anything else I need to be aware of. It doesn't look like it. I can now take the screws from the back of the case. Now one of these has got a scratch mark next to it. Almost certainly that's to mark the position of the long screw. And that, that is in fact the case. The other three screws should all be short. Well the scratch mark tells me that the shutter's certainly been serviced before. Ah, I've neglected to take something out there. Let's just pop those two of those screws back in while I do what I was supposed to do. I 
there's a pin runs through here on the the, uh, the cocking arm if you like I've got to push that out and I have a pair of pliers somewhere for doing tasks like that 